Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-1. Our previous episode laid out the groundwork for our new podcast. Today we will explain how the party met, and without further ado, we present our group. Nearly a dozen people waited on the rocks, the grassy hill, and one lone bench next to the water. A light fog is beginning to recede, and a flat-bottomed boat can be seen approaching the shore. A small child jumps up and down gleefully, yelling, The fairy is here! The fairy is here! The mother of the juvenile nodded her head and pointed out that it was still too far to board. As a fit grew, the others waiting rolled their eyes, fearing a long-lasting tantrum. The potential passengers rose from their seats and began to gather their belongings as a horseman rode up. A portly man, with sweat beating on his forehead, looked nervous and addressed the group, staring at him. Attention! Your attention, please! I'm looking for someone willing to take a package across the causeway. The group looked skeptically at the nervous man, who constantly looked behind him, as if being followed. Initially, no one accepted the offer and the rider began to point at people inquiring. You, guardsman, are you interested in a delivery mission? The man shook his head and stared at the nervous man. I am Fargus Stoutheart, a ranger. I am certainly no guardsman. I am not interested in being your delivery boy. He hoisted his bow and tossed a small sack over his shoulder and headed down to the dock to meet the ferry. The sweaty man inquired with several other people, but received no acceptance as the ferry docked and the people began to board. The rider made one last-ditch effort. There is a reward! A few gold crowns to the person who is able to deliver the item. Anyone? The people continued to board, but the rider felt a tug on his boot. Looking down, he spied what appeared to be a child next to his horse. I'll do it, he said. The man shook his head, telling the boy to go find his mother, and this was man's work. Putting his hands on his hips, the lethe figure began to argue, identifying himself as Welby O'Toole. He reported himself to be a halfling, not a child. The writer thought for a moment, knowing that the people were quite nimble of his culture, but were somewhat unpredictable. With no other options left, the man shook his head, but then spied a quartet of riders coming over the hill. Fine, the man exclaimed, and tossed Welby a small box. The halfling began to fidget with the item when the rider warned him, Do not open that. It is dangerous, little one. Deliver this to Gregor Finewire on the dock outside of Phoenix. He will give you your reward, but only if it is intact. Welby shrugged his shoulders and tossed it into his backpack, jumping onto the ferry just as it left the shoreline. Turning to wave, he noticed that the rider had sped off. Moments later, a quartet of riders zipped past with their gray cloaks flowing behind them. The halfling looked around the wobbly ferry and picked a spot in between two women in traveling cloaks and squeezed in, much to the lady's annoyance. Wilby looked around at the other passengers before pulling forth the small box to examine it. Wiggling it around, he shook the box close to his ear to determine the contents. Fargus Stoutheart sat opposite of the trio and shook his head. The sweaty man told you not to open it, midget. Best if you didn't would be my guess. The halfling became visibly annoyed and responded with his retort. I am not opening it. I am listening to it. Did they not teach you the difference in ranger school? Sticking out his tongue, Welby shook the box harder, and the ladies each scooted away from the diminutive rogue. A half-elf, sitting next to the ranger, was tuning his small lute and struck a strange chord, causing everyone to look at him. 
Grinning at the attention, he strummed his instrument in a playful tune. There once was a little hairy man. He played with a strange little box. His body was short and tan. With a tunic of green, it matched his socks. But stopped as Welby shook his head. What are you supposed to be? asked the halfling. I am Cabe Silvertongue, a bard and adventurer, as he doffed his cap to the ladies next to Welby. He started to strum his lute again, but was stopped as Welby leaned in to talk to him. Are you a good adventurer? Cabe was taken aback and pondered the question. A few moments went by and he sheepishly admitted that he was new to the trail and had not had many encounters. The halfling thought for a moment and responded that he was sorry. Puzzled, Cabe leaned forward and asked the little man what he meant. Welby popped the backs back into his backpack and sighed deeply. Well, he began, if your adventuring career is anything like your bardic ability, you'll need a shovel. A shovel? inquired the half-elf. Welby had pulled out a pipe and was cleaning it, nodding at the bard. Yeah, a shovel. If your adventuring career is like your singing ability, you'll be dead by sundown, and I'll use your shovel to bury you. The retort caused the two ladies in cloaks to laugh loudly along with the ranger. Cabe sat back upset, but quickly got over it. My singing will be better, but you'll always be half the man I am, short one. Causing everyone to laugh more, including Welby. I like you, elf. You left me a seat with these fine ladies. Look, I am the thorn between two roses. The ladies rolled their eyes and looked nonplussed. Turning back and forth, he spoke with the women. Ladies, since we have a boring journey ahead, perhaps you can tell me about yourselves. Rolling their eyes, they looked at each other, signaling that the other one could start. The woman to the right of Welby pulled her hood down, revealing silver hair. Hello, elf lady, he said as he licked his hand and slicked his hair back, causing Lady Irena to roll her eyes. I too am an adventurer to be. I have recently finished my studies with Master Olin a few miles away. I am headed to Phoenix now to start my career. Cabe the Bard interjected that Master Olin was a wizard and inquired if Irena was a purveyor of the magical arts. Looking at the Bard with disdain, she confirmed the account but added, half-breed, causing quite a bit of tension. Trying to lighten the mood, Welby smiled and pointed out that Cabe should come up with a song called Half-Breed. Everyone turned to look at the halfling who responded, Never know, it might be catchy. The woman on the other side shook her head and introduced herself. I am Sister Elaine, a loyal follower of Dilo and all his teachings. I too have recently graduated from my studies and am headed out to the wilderness to spread the word. Her enthusiasm was enough to cause Welby to scoot over towards Lady Irena. A stern look followed and the cleric continued. Mock me for my faith, but on the adventuring trail, they always want the cleric close. Fargus shook his head in agreement, pointing out, Aye, she speaks the truth there. So, Shavis, why did you take the box? The others looked at the halfling for the answer. First, it is pronounced Shay mus not shave us. And second, are you kidding me? He asked. Take this dinky box on a ferry? Give it to a guy on the docks for a few gold crowns? Why didn't you take this job? I'll probably have enough money to get a pony. Cabe turned to face the ranger. He has a point. Why didn't you accept the job? The human doesn't hesitate to places answer, explaining that a sweaty stranger shows up being pursued by some gray cloaks, asking for a favor, is never a good idea. He asked the group if they knew about the gray cloaks, but none were aware of them. Fargus then explained that they were rogue knights who played by their own rules. He continued giving his opinion that the sweaty man had stolen the box from the knights. Those gray cloaks will torture the fat man, and when they discover he doesn't have the box, they'll come looking for you as he pointed to the halfling. Silence fell over the group and Welby gave some uncomfortable chuckling. Pfft. You don't know what you're talking about, woodsman. Besides, I won't have the box long enough for them to get me. 
and I can hide really well. Silence fell over the group as each pondered the sweaty man's fate until the child began to yell and hop on the ferry. Castle Mom, look at the size of it! The adventurers at the back of the ferry turned to see a curtain wall atop a high cliff and a bustling port dead ahead. The group stared slack-jawed at the enormity of the community and the ferryman began to laugh at them. Welcome to Phoenix, you rubes! We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.